Today I'm going to share with you how I created this lovely, very easy lined tote bag using just your mini sewing machine and a few upcycled supplies from around the home. I started off by folding one end of an old bed sheet over so that I had two layers of the bed sheets fabric. I also folded my main outer fabric over so I had two layers of that. And then I just took a big bag as a reference and I'm going to cut all the way around it leaving quite a lot of uh, margin all the way around so that I have plenty of seam allowance for my bag. Now here we are with the four pieces, two of the white lining pieces, two of the main outer pieces and I'm going to sandwich one lining piece and one outer piece good sides facing each other and I'm just going to sew a straight line across the top end or the narrow end and I'm going to repeat that with the other pieces as well. Now to do that I am starting and finishing my stitch line with a reverse kangaroo hop that you have seen on my channel in this video and that will allow me to lock the stitches in place making sure that the thread does not unravel. And before long both the straight stitches across the top edges are done. Time to do a bit of pressing so I am at the ironing board and I'm first going to simply press the seams down so that the thread settles really well within the fabric. And then I'm going to unfold these fabrics so that they lie flat out and I'm going to fold the seam line over to one side. On this set I'm folding it towards the lining fabric and pressing it down and with the other pair of plots I'm going to fold the seam line towards the outer fabric and what this is going to do is when we come around to actually sewing the bag together those seam lines are not going to pile one upon the other making a big bulky stack of fabrics they're going to sit comfortably together without us having to go through really really thick layers of fabric so this time we have folded the seams over to the other side Now once the two fabric pieces have been stitched and pressed, this is what they look like and now we're going to lay them with the good sides facing each other. And I'm going to arrange them as accurately as possible, one on top of the other, trying to align all the edges together really really well. Then I take a pencil and on the lining fabric I make a mark about a good 4 to 5 inches across just to remind myself not to sew between those two points. And now I clip these fabrics all the way around making sure that I do not clip that bit between the pencil marks so I remember not to sew there. By the way, if you're new here, Unicrafts is a craft and home improvement channel committed to donating a percentage of all ad revenue to charities of your choice. You can find out more in the about section of Unicrafts and vote for your favorite monthly charity as well. And now I'm simply going to sew all the way around this rectangle of fabrics, leaving that 4 to 5 inches gap. Back at my mini sewing machine, I'm once again starting and stopping using a reverse kangaroo hop and then I'm simply going to sew all the way around this big rectangle of fabric and then at the end as well when I finish up at the other pencil mark, I'm going to do one more reverse kangaroo hop. Oh and every time I reach a corner, I'm going to make sure that I leave the needle inside the fabric, I lift the presser foot up and I pivot the project by 90 degrees and then I lower the presser foot and I keep on sewing. And in this way, it's a very very straightforward process. Uh, my lines come out beautifully straight because I am matching the edge of the fabric to that little strip of washi tape I've stuck on my machine as a seam guide. And wherever I go across multiple layers of fabric at the seams, I just simply press down on the presser foot using my little pair of scissors to make sure that the needle pierces through all the layers of fabric. And before long, we are done.
Now I take a pair of fabric scissors and I'm going to clip away at the corners just beyond the stitch line just so once I turn the project right side out I've got nice sharp pointy corners. Time to do a spot of nice hot steam iron pressing again. Pressing the seams after every stage of stitching really gives our project a nice neat crisp finish. Right, the ironing is now done and now there is the opening in the lining. I'm going to reach in through that hole and then turn the whole project right side out very, very carefully. And this is a very quick and easy process because we've got a nice generous opening there. And because we clipped the corners as well, they end up turning nice and pointy very, very easily. And I'm simply going to take a sharp object like a stylus or the tip of a pencil to poke the corners out and I also use my fingernails and my hands to push out the straight edges of the fabric so that our project is as nice and crisp as possible. And you guessed it, time for some more ironing and pressing so that our seams are all nice and crisp when we have turned it right side out. And remember to roll the seams between your fingers so that you get right to the very edge of it so that we are not eating into the space of our bag, the actual capacity of the bag. Now there is that opening in the lining, I'm simply going to turn the edges in nice and neat like so and simply going to press these edges down giving it a nice crisp finish. Lastly I'm simply going to sew a straight stitch across that opening to sew it closed. And as before, just to keep things simple, I'm simply doing a reverse kangaroo hop at the beginning and at the end of this straight stitch. And now this is what our project looks like. We are now going to pull open the outer fabric and stuff the inner lining fabric inside this outer fabric. And just like that, a magically lined bag appears out of nowhere. Uh, this is it. This is so quick and easy. The lining has now gone inside the outer fabric and we've got a lined bag. Now just to finish things off, I'm going to do two more things. I'm simply going to press all the way around the topmost seam. And I'm also going to sew one more stitch line all the way around the top seam. And once this is done, this is what the bag looks like so far. It's got a beautiful white inner lining and it's beautifully finished on the outside as well. Now to make the straps, I repurposed these old bag straps that I wasn't using anymore. So I'm roughly folding the bag over into thirds to mark the position where my eyelets need to go. And just to confirm that that is in fact the correct position, I am going to take a ruler to check that those markings are sitting equally from either edge and also from the top edge as well. And once I'm satisfied with the measurements, I'm simply going to take a pen and mark the exact point where I'm going to install the eyelets to create my handles. Now this little machine is called an eyelet setting machine and it helps me punch the fabric and install the eyelet all in one. So here I am punching the fabric first and when I press down on the lever I lean all the way over it and it punches a really lovely neat circle in my fabric. And once that's done, I'm simply going to take one eyelet and one washer and install the eyelet literally within seconds. It's so quick, so easy and I love my little machine because it's got different sizes of dies to set different sizes of washers in various fabrics and materials. So right now I'm using a medium sized um, washer and eyelet and before long all four eyelets have been installed.
and there it is all done all four eyelets have been installed now i'm simply going to take these old back straps and use these to create handles for my new little tote bag There it is, all done. I love the way this looks and feels. I can hardly believe that I created this myself at home and that too using a tiny little mini sewing machine that people think can't do anything. And yet here we are using repurposed materials to create um, gorgeous, useful, handy totes. Now all I need to do is put it on my shoulder and show you what it looks like. I do hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and learning how to create this very useful tote with me. I have been using it since I created it yesterday. I took it to the library with books and it worked out beautifully. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!